Hello, and thank you all for joining me today to talk about creating uh, your CHSOSA structured portfolio. Obviously, hoping that all of you on the call will apply, if not this time around, perhaps the next time, because the structured portfolio does take quite a bit of work to put together, but we want to walk through all the sections of it today. Uh, make sure that you understand what each of the sections is about, uh, what, how you can demonstrate your advanced operations capabilities. Uh, as an operations specialist. Uh, and that's not an insignificant piece, so we'll spend a little bit of time on that. We know that there's some items that could be confusing. This is only our second application cycle for CHSOSA, and so we want to make sure it's as clear as possible, because we do know that the more clear we make it to you as an applicant, frankly, the easier it is for the reviewers to be able to understand what it is that you have actually uh, completed what, what you've demonstrated in your professional career. So that's what we're going to certainly try and focus on. Certainly have a few tips towards the end, and then we'll make sure we answer your questions. Uh, I will not be recording the questions because we'll be taking this recording and putting it up online. And so the, the questions aren't necessarily the best thing to put up there, uh, but we'll certainly answer your questions after I've stopped the recording. So one of the first things, of course, to think about is why you are going to apply. And uh, one, the reason we, we look at starting there before you even look at the eligibility criteria is because we know it's going to take you probably 20 to 40 hours to put together this structured portfolio. It may sound like a lot, but that is what our applicants tell us it takes typically for when they're putting this together because there's a lot of things to compile with a, a, the CV. There's narrative statements to respond to. You're pulling pictures or videos or whatever it is for your exemplar, all these things take time. And certainly you're going to be spending some time smoothing them out, making them look professional. And so it's a chunk of time and you've got to keep, keep yourself going late at night when uh, you're tired and you need to get this done with the deadline coming up. And so having a why always makes it very, very useful. And we hope that you have some wonderful whys like I'm going to get a raise. Of course, we love to be able to recognize you as a new CHSOSA. So that's a great reason. Uh, is certainly a way to demonstrate your professional development, your professional pathway, your growth in the industry, and to be you know move forward into a visible position of leadership in in healthcare simulation. So lots of great reasons out there, but make sure you identify the ones that are appropriate for you. And that's before you then get to the eligibility criteria. For the most part, they are identical to the CHSOS eligibility criteria, including the degree. We did not have a change. Uh, from the bachelor's degree level. So the only one you're really focused on is that five years of experience in healthcare simulation. Uh, again, in that operations uh, expertise, that operations role is, the, is really the biggest difference uh, that we are looking for. The deadlines, September 1 and March 1 of every year. We're obviously coming up onto the September 1 deadline pretty darn quick. It doesn't take much time to get there, of course, uh, but that's our uh, deadlines couple of things in general that must be an underlying theme when you're putting together your structured portfolio is what differentiates a CHSOSA from a CHSOS. Honestly, a lot of it is about impact and influence from beyond your own institution or organization. Uh, need a little bit more description there because some of you may have a very large organization that you work for. So what I'm lo looking for is you want impact beyond the place that you show up every day for work. Uh, and that may be you know, a couple buildings or whatever it might be. Um, it perhaps is a large healthcare, uh, healthcare uh, facility, a, a, a large academic institution, but many of those have multiple locations through different cities, different states, different regions, uh, perhaps even different countries, depending on the area of the world that you are from. And so we're looking that you have an impact beyond, again, what you would call your home uh, institution, that, that home place where you go in and, and actually check in for the day when you go to work. We're also looking for things like your demonstrated leadership in healthcare simulation operations. And there's lots of ways to do that through service to organizations, um, some of your various activities, be it through blogs or whatever it might be, but the, that's things like advocacy, mentorship, whatever it might be, lots of different aspects and components to leadership. And of course, we definitely need to be looking at your advanced uh, skills in healthcare simulation operations, you know, that operations specialist specific functions and things like that and how you're grown and are demonstrating that advanced level of performance. So those are the three pillars that we're looking for uh, as a whole, as you look through all of this presentation today, or of course, when you're developing that structured portfolio, keep those three key things in the back of your brain and make sure you're writing down all the wonderful things that you do 
in those three strands of uh, content. Of course, start with downloading all the documents, the handbook, the application information sheet, the application worksheet, the standards and suggested evidence, and also the exemplar cover sheet. So that rather important document you have to start with is that CHSOSA standards and suggested evidence. That was that second one we asked you to download. You'll see it's broken into four different domains. And in each of those domains, there's a number of standards. And all those then have a two-year level of performance as well as a five-year level of performance. It's important to understand the big word suggested because we know that in each of those standards, you may or may not be actually performing those specific skills and or abilities that are listed. They are there to indicate the level of performance in each of those two columns, either that two-year CHSOS competency or that five-year CHSOSA competency. And of course, you can have many higher levels of performance that would be well beyond that. That document is central to the entire CHSOSA certification because a reviewer is going to be referencing that every time they look at whatever you have submitted to see where you fall in each of those areas to see if you're at that five level five year level of performance beyond it maybe not quite there uh, but you'll see that this document looks like this so and again i mentioned here's your domain at the top your standard is listed down to the left and then that two year and five year level of performance do you have to do everything at the five year level of performance the answer is no we know that you're going to have different standards for which you are progressing more rapidly or in your own professional career because of your organizational needs, your own personal strengths uh, and interests. And so the overall thing we're looking at is that as a CHSOSA, that as an overall, you are at that five-year level of performance or beyond. So some of these things, you may still be just at the CHSOS level or a little bit beyond. Others, you're going to be at seven, eight, 10, 12 years or equivalent level of performance. And that's all okay. Just make sure that you're very clear with what you submit as to your advanced capabilities, your advanced abilities in each of the different areas. So we make sure we're giving you plenty of credit for those things that you've well exceeded. And that helps offset those areas that you may not have gone quite as far professionally yet. And that's all okay. It's that overall gestalt and, that, and what the, the reviewers are looking for. I know some of these things can get a little bit confusing, but I hope I'm going to describe them as clearly as possible to make it easy for you when you're going through and putting your structured portfolio together. That second document uh, that I wanted to discuss was the application worksheet. And this builds uh, for the application information sheet has sort of all of the various pieces of the application that you're going to be submitting has more detailed information on a lot of these things, uh, such as when we look at the narrative statements uh, that's at item three on the screen here, and it has a lot of the leading questions, uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about those. But this worksheet is just a simple Word document designed to help you just start answering all the questions. So that way, when you have to enter them online, you're just doing a simple copy and paste. And so you can write your, uh, briefly describe the submitted exemplar, you can put that answer in right there whatever it might be. Uh, and again, each of these things has different word limits and so forth. So just put that in there. Um, be ready to copy and paste it over. Doesn't mean that you can't go back and forth into the online application, but it's easier sometimes for a lot of people just to work off of a Word document first. And so that application worksheet is designed as a worksheet to help you work through all the pieces that you have to compile for your application. Elements of that structured portfolio. There's the online application I briefly mentioned already, those narrative responses as well. There's an exemplar that you'll be submitting, a healthcare simulation specific CV or resume. You'll be submitting two references, and that actually will be from the references themselves, and they'll come to us without you having seen them. Uh, and we'll, we'll discuss all these things a little bit further on. And of course, the application fee as well. A note on the creation of the portfolio. We wanted to share the general process that our viewers go through. So perhaps when you are developing your structured portfolio, you can think about, well, which one would I, are they gonna be starting off with so I can focus on the information there? So you're looking at the CV first, they're just gonna go through that, get a feel for who you are. 
Then they're going to go on to your application and narrative responses and get a little bit deeper, deeper dive into what it means to, to know a bit more about you, get some of your insights and so forth. Then we're going to look at your, your references, see what they have to say about you. And then finally, on to your creation, whatever it is that you have submitted as your exemplar, to see that demonstrated performance of all those things that you've represented through your CV, uh, narrative responses, what your references have submitted, and look at these amazing things that you can do through your exemplar that you've submitted. <clears throat> so that means when we look at the CV first, we want to make sure we're as clear as possible. And so we've got a couple slides here just to give you an idea of the sorts of things that we might look for. So your professional development activities, of course, we want to look at who you are first. So just, you know, where, where do you work? Where do you, what's your education? All those sort of basic things. But when we're looking at the things you want to highlight, put in your professional development activities, put in your simulation scholarship contributions. And we know that not all these things necessarily apply. Uh, we tried to give lots of different examples that may be more specific to operations specialists and your role. And so you'll see some of these things here, uh, things like patents or inventions, obviously, are definitely something that you may already have. Uh, but even think about uh, other items that you can uh, demonstrate in your CV or resume for which you can get credit. Uh, and so uh, uh, typically what we find in a CV or resume is stuff that can be cross-referenced. So if someone wanted to independently look at what inventions you've made, they should be able to find those. And so there is a little bit of a threshold for what can go on there. So if you have created a bunch of uh, different things, but they have not yet risen to the level of a patent or something like that, you may have to think about different ways to submit those, but again, it would be probably through your narrative to show all the wonderful things that you have done and perhaps even your references could also discuss how you have actually helped do things at the simulation center if it's again a supervisor or something like that through the creation of your various task trainers and things like that but for your your cv and resume it should be generally something that can be cross-referenced to an external source if someone were to go and uh, look that up other items you might consider on that cv or resume is your creative development activities and projects uh, and again, you may even have some links here. And part of the reason for this is because we know a lot of you do different things in the electronic world. We'll just call it that, uh, the internet of things. And so there may be a lot of really neat things out there, blogs you posted, uh, videos, YouTube's channels. I mean, all these sorts of things like this that are professional, they show how you're disseminating information, uh, supporting the healthcare simulation community, perhaps their mentorship type activities, whatever it might be. Uh, but don't be afraid to add those things as well. And again, again, you can see that this is cross-referenced to an external source. If I'm going to a YouTube channel to see the things that you put up there, it's going to be pretty easy to find, because even though the link is in your, your CV. Again, that cross-references it. Lots of things you can put in for, for simulation-specific activities related to committee work, service to simulation organizations, or whatever. Of course, plenty of things like awards, recognition, uh, highlights, other, other pieces like that as well. We do recommend you be specific as possible when you put this together. Uh, a lot of CVs and resumes may come in and they list things like your conference presentations. Take it a little step further and just state what your role is. Was, was that perhaps you started off earlier and you were just one of the panelists and someone else had put the, the, the slide deck together. A few years later, maybe you're the lead panelist, but you're using something that, that somebody else had already presented and you're just taking that on. And of course, a, a, a normal evolutionary process is you're more the content creator, uh, the leader and things like that later on. And by putting those things in with each of your presentations, be it a plenary presentation, a panel presentation, a solo presentation, a workshop, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the, the reviewers will get a great idea about your expanding and growing role, how you're growing as a professional through your career. So don't be afraid to put those things in there. And you don't have to have long, long statements or these things, that just, but just little, little pieces that, that help the reviewers understand your specific role where appropriate for each of the items there. And again, lots of lots of ways that, that you might be able to insert that in there. But one of the challenges for the reviewers is not completely understanding each person's role in the items listed on a CV. And that's what we want to try and eliminate is that guesswork for the reviewers. Just be very clear about what your role was. So they know exactly what it is that you did. For any CV or resume, you're balancing depth versus breadth. Uh, I would suggest be more thorough. You know, we're not talking verbose. We're, you know, we want to be brief as well. 
but just make sure again that you have a, a good range of all the various things that are in there and uh, hopefully as complete as possible to show all the various settings that you have participated in in your professional pathway and that helps the reviewers again understand how you have grown as a professional When you move on to that online application, you're going to see things such as core professional information, again, very, very basic, but we're certainly looking even for a, a little bit of information about your organization, because we don't know where you work or which organ, what your organizational structure is. And so there's a little bit there to help the reviewers understand how large your institution is. And then therefore, uh, what types of things may be an opportunity for you, how what your unique challenges may be. Uh, again, lots of different, uh, things may present themselves in a one person shop versus a place where you're working with 10 other operations specialists. And so that's, again, each just just an idea to, to give the reviewer uh, reviewers, excuse me, an insight into where you are, where you come from. Of course, you're confirming you meet the eligibility criteria, checking off that you aspire to the healthcare simulationist code of ethics. And then you're moving into responding to the narrative statements. I uh, mentioned those before. There's a lot of information in the application information sheet that has a lot of guiding questions for each of the domains. Uh, you'll see on this uh, online form, it's very hard to see on this, but there's actually a little eye where you can click on it and it brings up those same guiding questions. And the idea behind those guiding questions is to help you with how you are going to craft your response for each of the narrative responses. Uh, if all you do is respond to those guiding questions, you'll actually be well on your way to helping the reviewers understand your insight, your perspectives for each domain, because those guiding questions are, are sort of meta questions for each of the long list of standards within each domain. And so they are sort of questions that help pull together everything that would be in this particular uh, domain and helps the reviewers understand your demonstrated performance in each of those domains. Uh, I would certainly suggest you cross reference to your exemplar activity as appropriate because they can see where that exemplar was important for each of the domains. Uh, that's very, very useful. Um, I know I probably will touch on it later, but please don't just copy and paste from your CV uh, into these. Uh, uh, each of the domains because that is going to be a duplication and you're wasting precious characters where you actually want to extend your information that's in the cv and provide that depth of insight through your narrative response that builds on what they've already looked at in your cv or resume again remembering that they start off with that cv first and then they're going to come into your application and these narrative responses and get more insight at that time I mentioned again that elaboration, that depth of understanding is really, really critical. And uh, I chose this picture because this is really where you get a chance to show off your, uh, your, your status as a star, uh, really is what we're looking for. And so think about it from that perspective, not just I'm listing all I've done, but why it was important, why it was meaningful, why it had an impact beyond your institution, how it demonstrated your leadership, how it showed off your advanced operation skills and whatever that, that thing is that you're discussing at that time. So that's not just, again, an elaboration, uh, but it's, it's going to that in-depth, paint the picture for them, help them understand what it is uh, that is, again, your, your advanced level of demonstrated performance as an operations specialist. You mentioned the references earlier. It's a little bit of a different thing than what we have seen before with common letters or references, because unfortunately those broad letters that you might have someone write for you don't necessarily help the reviewers understand your performance as an operations specialist. And so we have you send the link to your references and then they can complete the form. And you sort of see the, the, the top of the form there. You can go and actually see this form for yourself. It's on our webpage. There's nothing hidden there or anything like that. You won't see the responses they submit because they do come directly to us, but you can see everything that's in the form. And they're not only giving you the Likert scale responses, but then we are also asking them to give insights as to why they scored you that way. And so for the professional values and capabilities, if they gave you all fours, why? What have they seen from you that says 
uh, that you are adhering to applicable laws, that you're a leader, that you're an advocate for simulation, whatever it may be. And so we're asking for that insight. And that again, helps those reviewers understand your advanced capabilities as an operations specialist. And so again, very, very important to choose wisely for your references. Uh, we ask that you do not select individuals who are also applying at the same time as you for the CHSOSA. There's an optic there that just seems a little off. Uh, and we just feel that it's better to have other people who are not applying at the same time. Uh, and so that's one of those things that may be a bit of a challenge, but do pick people that can give great insight into your capabilities. It may be people who are at your work. It may be people who are in your organization. It may even people be people with perhaps SSH or Inaxel or SESM, whoever it might be, where you do a lot of volunteer work and they can give other insight from a different perspective into your advanced capabilities. It's important to understand that they are due by the deadline as well, along with the rest of your information. And don't be afraid to give individuals you've chosen as your reference some tips or hints or items to highlight. Maybe they just need a, a little bit of a memory jog. It's like, oh, remember when we did this one activity at this conference and how we had to work through all these things? And they can go, oh, that's great. Yeah, that'll be a fantastic example. And then when the reviewers see that, they're getting that insight into how you're able to handle a very complex situation from that operations specialist perspective and you know, have been very successful, we hope, of course. Your exemplar. This one is, is quite a challenge for many of you as an operations specialist, because whereas for the CHSEA, it's pretty straightforward to ask for a simulation activity that's been designed, for the operations specialist, your exemplar can be any number of things, an invention, um, a process you've changed, a whole variety of things that, that could be out there. Uh, but ultimately, it's something that is compre comprehensive or complex for which you have been the primary contributor uh, that is focused on demonstrating your advanced capabilities in that operations specialist role. Uh, and so again, am I the primary designer, author, creator? Again, whatever it is, shows that advanced level, level of operations uh, specialist capabilities, and you're going to be submitting it by Dropbox to me. But it, you can see here that it could be any number of things. And this is an incomplete list to be sure. Um, we don't want you to feel like you have to fit into these categories that has to be an invention or an innovation, even that it has to be a technology, because it could be about your evolving processes uh, at your organization. I, I've talked with individuals about uh, would, would being the one who helps develop all the technology and technology you know, backbone structure and things like that for a brand new center we're building would that count to me i think that would be fabulous because as long as you're the primary person who's the expert on that why not because it's showing a great range of uh, and depth of knowledge that's needed uh, the ability to apply technologies understand them put them in healthcare simulation all these kinds of things perhaps you've done something like rewritten the entire policy manual, perhaps even created one there where there wasn't one before. You may have been the person that had to put that together. Very complex, comprehensive type project that would fit as well. Has nothing to do with technology outside of perhaps addressing some of those things within the policy and procedure manual, but lots of different ways that, that again, that, that you can demonstrate a lot of advanced capabilities there. Uh, you may never have actually invented something, but you've come up with new applications, new ways to use healthcare simulation technologies. That would be a wonderful thing as well. And again, I, I don't want this to, to feel like, oh, it has to be within one of these categories. These are samples only. If you have any ideas about what might suit as an exemplar, please email me. If I'm not sure, I'm going to go to some of my subject matter experts and say, what do you think? And get the feedback from them because I am not an operations specialist. Uh, except I guess a little bit of part-time here, but I would not be the right person to make that assessment of whether it would suit, be suitable as an exemplar, unless it's a very obvious thing, uh, because it's, it's again, something like we're moving into a new SEM center and I was, the, I was the, the, the person that put all that technology backbone together. That seems like a pretty obvious one in my book. Do note that it has to be a completed item and actually be in use. Uh, just stating that you're going to be doing something or it's partially in development is not sufficient. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, and I mentioned a couple of times about it needing to be comprehensive or complex. For the exemplar, uh, a little bit of a different process this time compared to what has been done the first time. Again, this is only our second cycle for the CHSOSA. 
And one of the things that was a little challenging because of the, of the diversity of submissions, that again, you, you just heard that me talk about all the various possible options and then a, a bunch of, you know, and, and as fits best kind of thing, uh, we decided to create a cover sheet. And so there's some core questions you can see over there on the right that you're going to have to answer. Each has a character limit that helps give some insight into why this exemplar was important to you, why it's, it's demonstrating your advanced capabilities and so forth. Uh, and then you're also going to see that you're going to be listing each item, what it's called, uh, a description of it, and your role in each part. Okay, so item number one is called picture number one. And then you see in picture number one, I started with this mannequin and it was just a regular old mannequin, but we needed X. So now you can see that I worked through and how I got into the inside bits of it and how I added X all the way through all the various pictures. You're just labeling each one at various steps of it. And then your final picture, number 10 or whatever that would magically be says, here it is working and you can see why it does this. And so all these things would be what you submit. And again, whether it's videos, documents, um, pictures, uh, it could be websites to go to to see a lot of these things. The idea is to have a cover sheet that helps the reviewer walk through your exemplar so they can understand what it is that you've submitted, why it's again important, and how it demonstrates your advanced capabilities. And that cover sheet gets submitted along with all of those other items, those pictures, videos, etc. cetera. Uh, and that again guides the uh, reviewers in understanding what it is that they're looking at. Mentioned that, that demonstrating performance can be a little challenging. Uh, this is not specific to the operations specialist role. It may have some additional layers of challenge, which uh, you may resonate with, I don't know. But one of the things that's difficult for us as humans is often how to actually represent what we actually do. Uh, and the example I often use is perhaps many of you have had to turn in a short biography because you're presenting at a conference or it has to be uh, attached to the, the the uh, submission, whatever it might be. And it's really actually quite difficult for many of us to suddenly be writing about, well, I did this and I came from here and I went through this and I completed this and I accomplished this. There's a whole lot of I statements in there. And that gets really, really difficult for us because suddenly we start to feel like we're bragging or saying things that we aren't supposed to because so much of our writing, we're, we're trained to not write in that I kind of framework. That's actually what we're asking you to do. But now on a much magnified scale, in the form of a structured portfolio. That's going to be a little scary for, for a lot of you, I have a feeling. And the tendency of humans is to unfortunately downplay their role in things. And so what we're asking you to do is try and work really hard to put that aside and just be very, very clear about your role. There's nothing wrong with stating what you have done. We're not asking you to embellish, fluff it up, you know, add a whole bunch of extraneous pieces that are not part of it. We want you to be clear, precise, concise, and just state, this is what I did. And, you know, I, I was the lead in this. And what I mean by that is, I was the one who set up the meetings, guided the work, uh, helped keep us on task, you know, again, whatever it might be, all those things are factual, you're just stating them, and don't be afraid to put those down. And that's that specificity and role and impact that uh, I'm, I list over on that left side there. That's the best way to get past that. Um, it can be short bullet points, it doesn't have to be a full narrative or anything like that. Uh, but again, don't downplay your role in it because then you may actually not be fully representing yourself to the reviewers and that works against you. And that's really not very fair to you, but we can only work off of what you submit. And if you don't have the full information there, the reviewers really can't be filling in the gaps arbitrarily and thinking like, oh, well, you know, it, it was probably okay. They're, they're not allowed to do that. They have to go with what you have actually submitted. So I would suggest that you look at that uh, standards and suggested evidence and frankly, pull straight from the terminology. Uh, you know, what is it that you've actually done that's very, very similar and make sure you're just addressing those either in your CV and your narratives, uh, in your exemplar, whatever it might be. Uh, we certainly think that having somebody else look at your CV and your narrative responses is a very appropriate step. And make sure that they're not just looking at it, you know, you're giving it to them blind. Say, look, I need to make sure that I show off my advanced capabilities as an operations specialist. I've got to show impact. I've got to show leadership. Do you get the feel for that when you look at these things? And they, they should take that red pen and go, oh, it's a little unclear here. 
uh, perhaps you want to add a little bit more here, whatever it might be. Don't be afraid to get that feedback because that's just going to make your structured portfolio that much stronger. So take advantage of others, uh, especially those who you view as a mentor, to give you that, that strong and honest feedback that will help you improve your structured portfolio. And again, we ask you to just state the facts. Go ahead and infuse some excitement because you probably aren't here in healthcare simulation because you find it boring. You're enthusiastic and excited about this. Share why, why that's important to you. What, what's a big deal about what you did with your exemplar or what, how your career has, has progressed? That excitement is a great thing to have come through in what you submit in your structured portfolio. A couple of notes on the review process. We do have two reviewers that are assigned to each applicant that comes in. Uh, they'll be making uh, an assessment of yes, no, or unsure based on their comparison overall of your submitted structured portfolio to the standards and suggested evidence. And so they're looking for that overall gestalt. I mentioned it back when we first talked about that document and that you may or may not have all of the things at a five year plus level, but that's that overall gestalt of do they meet that five-year concept of someone who's advanced in their skills, they're a leader, they're making an impact, those three core areas again, and they'll make that assessment of yes, no, or unsure. If there's any results other than two yeses, we're gonna assign a third reviewer, especially for those split ones. Uh, and then we're probably gonna go to review, a review panel anyway, because we wanna make sure that every review uh, that occurs, every applicant that comes through has a full and thorough, fair review. And so sometimes it takes those extra set of eyes to pick out details and information that the first two reviewers may not have completely understood or have just, you know, they just happen to miss it, whatever might happen. So we've got layers of evaluation to ensure that we're looking at every application that comes through as thoroughly and fairly as possible to be able to complete the final uh, uh, assessment of whether uh, the applicant has made CHSOSA or not quite yet. So that's kind of how that looks like. I would share some of their sticking points. And again, when they're looking at that overall gestalt, we ask our reviewers to go at things with a positive approach. What is it that is going to add to you being a CHSOSA? They're not trying to find all the things that make you not one. They're looking for the positive approach. What are the things that do make you a CHSOSA? So they wanna be able to see that. They wanna be able to see your impact and leadership. Uh, that you follow directions and answered all the questions, your, your answers are complete and professional. I mean, if you have a lot of typos and things like that, that puts a lot of doubt in their brain. Because how can you say that you're a leader and, and have demonstrated a lot of impact if you can't pr present yourself professionally through a portfolio that has a lot of directions and has a structure to it? And of course, the exemplar itself must have the appropriate details and aspects of the activity to show a complex and comprehensive uh, uh, item that, uh, again, shows off your advanced capabilities. So just make sure we're, we're, you're being very clear, making it easier for the reviewers, because every time they have a gap, it makes it harder for them to make that overall assessment at, of the gestalt of you as a CHSOSA. Here's some basic tips. Uh, we, we have a coin term, sympathies, and that's what you're trying to show off. Uh, I've probably covered a lot of these things. You can see how we're, we, we've got to back everything up to that, the, the standards and suggested evidence, um, having somebody review, uh, looking at, you know, at, at, if you've chosen your best exemplar, giving yourself plenty of time to complete the portfolio. Uh, if it turns out you're running out of time, you know, we, we can have you just go back to the next application cycle because if you're cramming it in at the end, that's when errors can occur. Uh, you might short circuit your responses and just leave more questions than you really want to. And we'd rather that you submit your structured portfolio that, that, that is well put together and very clear and that reviewers make it, it's just an easy slam dunk for them to say, yes, this person is a CHSOSA. Uh, application timelines. We have the March 1 and September 1 cycles. Uh, all items must be submitted, and they have a two-month review onto the notification process. Uh, some final reminders, uh, just to make sure you read all those documents and that you understand all of what you're working through, have a plan that you developed, work through all the pieces that have to be submitted. And again, back to just show off that you're an advanced operations specialist. That's, that's really what we're trying to do here. Couple of FAQs just to make sure I've covered them. Um, 
this one I have not. I know uh, this does the CHSOSA application does not count for renewal of CHSOS. It assumes your CHSOS expiration dates, no matter what those are. It could be that you have three days left, three months, or almost all of the full three years. So I'll work with you when you're making your submission. So you understand that process because you may have to do your renewal of the CHSOS. So that way, when you're granted CHSOSA, it takes on those dates again, whatever those may be. You're not required to be an SSH member, but if you don't have a home organization where you can volunteer and grow your, prof your professional status, uh, be educated, we have certainly would encourage that. There is an application fee of $150 to apply, and that's for SSH members or members of organizations that support CHSOSA. We're up to something like 14 different organizations that support our certifications. So chances are you're a member of one of those organizations. You submit your portfolio through a combination of the online items that must be submitted, and that includes your references that have to submit their online forms. And all other items are submitted by a Dropbox or other means is arranged if your organization does not allow for Dropbox. Uh, there is the one payment button that is also on our website that's for submitting the fee. So it's probably the one other piece you have to keep in mind. Uh, I mentioned that you send your the link for the reference to your references. We don't have that information. You can, in fact, turn around as soon as we are done now and actually go ahead and send them that link right now. They can turn in their references at any time that we don't have to wait until after you've already submitted your items. We just take everything as it comes in and start creating those structured portfolios. And uh, when we're ready, we put it all together so they can start on those references right now. Uh, just a re reiteration on the review process. Um, again, we've got multiple layers, so we make sure we review as thoroughly as possible. Uh, and then that impact and influence, it means, again, going, it's, you're not just coming to work every day. It means you're doing things either with work or beyond work, perhaps volunteering for an organization like SSH or SimGhost or whatever it may be. Uh, and you're making an impact in many other ways, or perhaps you're doing things on the side through your own blogs, video casts, any of these sorts of things like that. So impact and influence definitely means going beyond the walls of your own institution and being at least somewhat regional or uh, dimensional in, the, in how you impact things. And I say it that way because we may not always have a geographical influence, but if you can demonstrate that you have impacted a number of other operations specialists from around the world through sort of a more profession-based approach, that also, of course, is impact and influence as well. And so there's lots of ways to go about doing that and just make sure you're covering them in your narrative statements, your CV and so forth. Got my email and of course the website here for any information and I will stop the, re the recording now and we will take your questions.